All right, now we're rolling. All right, hello everyone. I'm Thomas Engelman, the director of galleries at HCC, and I'm thrilled to have with me today, Clark DeCapit Jr. Clark is a Cleveland, Ohio native and holds a BFA in crafts with a concentration in glass from Kent State University in Kent, Ohio. Clark received his MFA from the University of Miami in Florida in sculpture with a concentration in glass. Clark is an assistant professor at Ursuline College in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Clark current, Clark's current virtual exhibition, Momentary, concentrates on his formal training in glass work and leads us into his more contemporary cross-pollinated use of materials, site-specific installation and time-based methods of creating a dynamic, well-thought-out work that ties our past to our present. Clark, thank you for taking the time to join me today, and uh, it's great to have you. Hi, Thomas. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to, to talk and you know, discuss some of my work. And uh, also thanks to everybody uh, at the college that uh, welcomed me and had me, uh, had me along. So I appreciate it very much. Great. Um, I am, I've got your exhibition pulled up now. Um, can you see it on your end? Yes, looking good. Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, so let's begin if we can with this, uh, with your first work right here. Um, sorry, I'm gonna move this and try to adjust a little bit just so we can get, there we go, the full gamut up. Beautiful. Okay, um, let's talk about this first piece, uh, hook torsion and uh, in your cast glass work. So dive right in and let us know a little bit about this piece. Okay, um, so, I mean, in general and thinking about uh, the work that I create uh, in glass, um, I'm finding dated objects or items that have been uh, utilized over a number of years. And uh, what I like to do is I will duplicate those items and then uh, re-congregate or reconnect those items into a, a parent structure or a host structure. So um, with hook torsion, that was a, uh, an old hook that had been utilized and um, that I found secondhand. And um, I ultimately, through, uh, I utilized the lost wax casting technique. So um, I ended up duplicating this piece a number of times in wax and then uh, transferring that uh, wax into uh, glass through the casting process. And um, it's really just talking about uh, the dynamic nature of uh, experience and how experience, although it's intangible, um, it, it does hold weight. Uh, the individual then is, uh, acts as a container for experience. And uh, so each of these individual units within the composition are uh, moments of, its, of this object's past life or its history. And um, I'm trying to talk about, again, the, the dynamic nature of, of the arc of one's life and uh, the progression of an individual through, through life and experience in society. And, and um, yeah, it, it's a static piece, but yet it's a piece that speaks of uh, a dynamic past. Excellent. Yeah, and there is a great sense of movement too within this piece. Um, technical question: While we're on this one, it how uh, is this piece displayed in terms of uh, how is it structurally held up? Is it this all one piece, or is this multiple pieces you would uh, put together? No, uh, that's a good question. So it is. These are multiple pieces that have been created, and uh, the pieces are then laminated together um, through a process that's uh, proprietary and magical. And uh, I don't discuss that on air. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's some uh, super glue and uh, maybe some hot glue, some uh, silicone, and some putty, and uh, I don't know. I think there might be some jelly or jam in between a couple of these pieces. So. <laughs> well, whatever's holding it together, it's beautiful. Um, Thank you. Uh, if, if we can touch on uh, semicircle now, we're, we're working again with these. Um, found objects and creating multiples. Uh, talk a little bit about this piece. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is a piece that was taken, taken uh, or, well, it utilizes uh, a used horseshoe that was uh, gifted to me uh, by somebody who was familiar with my work. And they uh, asked if I'd be interested in making a piece out of this used horseshoe uh, that they've had for many years. And, uh, and just kind of, hanging out with the, the horseshoe and having a conversation with it, I uh, came up with a composition that ultimately uh, is based, based off a, a horseshoe itself in structure, but um, 
it's also somewhat uh, carcass-like, kind of almost like the remnant of a some kind of creature or animal or some kind of, uh, again, antiquated uh, object itself. So, um, and this is a piece that I ended up creating a channel uh, that runs all the way through one side of those horseshoes, which are all connected up by a stainless rod. But um, mm -hmm. it's a piece that's, it's about the object and it's about the presentation of the, uh, the overall composition, but it's also, uh, equally as important, it's, it's about the, the space between and the, and the shadows that are cast. Um, and that's something that is a unifying theme throughout a lot of my, my glass work that we'll be looking at today. But it's, it's not always about the object. Sometimes it's about the presence of the object uh, in a more ephemeral manner. So thinking about what is cast and something that is not always uh, a point of interest or a point of concern, you know, the, the gaps and the spaces and the light that's uh, allowed to tra traverse the actual piece itself or the composition itself. Great, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, when we get into uh, this uh, next piece down here, this uh, Reamer cluster, um, this is uh, you know taking on. I, I I would say it's multiples, but now you've kind of moved into multiples that are um, separate and not just one contained unit. Um, it, it, what, what's your, I, I would say your, your thought with making multiples, but then making kind of multiple objects made of multiples, if that makes sense with, with this piece? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it, in my mind, a, a point of inspiration would be looking at the sciences and um, I'm not suggesting that this is biological in any way, but uh, in thinking about the ways in which uh, cells can duplicate in which uh, oftentimes you see uh, what was once a, a parent or a host object, how it can kind of uh, dismember itself and start to create another object in its own image. Um, so it's uh, this duplicity that can take place, um, whether it be natural or man-made. In this case, we're talking about man-made objects uh, that are thus constructed into man-made man uh, parent structures. But um, it's it is something that I, looking at biology and looking at the sciences, I can't help but say that I, I certainly was stealing from nature, but we all are, so. <laughs> yeah, we're all taking cues from nature for sure. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. And when we move over to this uh, tapered uh, splay piece, um, something that stands out in, to me uh, initially with this piece is the type of, I guess, the type of glass or the color of glass you're using. Um, can you talk about the types of glass you use and, and kind of your, I guess, color selection or, and or lack of color within these uh, pieces? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I utilize a typical soda lime casting glass. Um, and I usually like to compose in, in black and clear. I don't utilize an extensive color palette. Um, but um, in, in thinking about the color that I do uh, in view into the work, I, I'm thinking about something that is being consumed or something that is being filled or completed. So by uh, using something that's opaque, such as black or a color that's opaque, um, I'm trying to really obscure the way in which light can transition or transmit through a piece. Um, so it's making the piece, the piece is translucent, but um, it is, certainly opaque and it's uh, in creating this opacity within the work. I'm, I'm trying to focus on the exterior of the piece, but the, the ability for the interior to again, transmit light and have kind of this inner aura. Um, and in dealing with black um, and the combination of black and clear, I think about just varying degrees of opacity and just the ways in which our, our experience come to be how uh, there are certain experiences we have that hold to be truths in our lives. And um, they seem to be, they set down foundations for us. Uh, there are other experiences that are fleeting and uh, they may have a little bit more uh, of a translucent core or a core that is uh, less complete and uh, less readily drawn upon. So I do, again, the pieces are stand-ins for, for moments uh, within an individual's experience or within uh, an experiential reality, so to speak. Excellent, thank you. And one more technical question about this piece, uh, uh, the taper splay. Uh, is, are these pieces um, in here together or are they just resting um, freely? So these, in this case, these pieces are just stacked. 
So they're, uh, they rest freely and um, they're readily movable too. So uh, when I assemble this piece for display, uh, this piece is something that's going to be slightly different every time. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's much like uh, if we think about memory and we think about experience, uh, the majority of the time when we try to recall a moment, um, it's not always going to have the clearest details or the details aren't going to be in the same order. Um, and uh, I, I guess so is a lifetime or such as a lifetime. It's these moments that again, they, they fit together, but it's not always uh, a relationship that we can readily duplicate. So I like to keep this being a piece that, that is altering uh, as it's being viewed. Excellent. All right, um, moving on into uh, this next piece here. Um, what I initially jumps out to me is that you have a mixture of glass and then what appears to be the um, remainder, I would say, of that utilitarian object. Can you talk a bit more in depth about kind of the mixture of, um, I would say, mixed materials within this glass piece? Yeah, so uh, this piece, it, it contains copper and contains steel. Uh, so I am more heavily referencing the original object itself, uh, which was an ice pick. Um, but again, it's just, just kind of experimenting and exploring uh, some of the materials that uh, I think are, not to overuse the term, but foundational materials that uh, have really lent themselves towards uh, our expansion and our evolution, I think, as a, a culture and society and just things that have been so fundamental. Um, so there's the object that's been a fundamental object of use, but then there are also these materials of, I think about steel, I think about copper, thinking about glass as well. Um, these are things that, again, in order for us to be where we're at, these are materials that we've uh, completely relied upon. So I'm just trying to think about these objects as um, no longer functioning in their, their previous manner, but uh, now they're objects that are meant, and objects and materials to be just viewed as, as uh, items to, to appreciate. Um, but they, they do tell their own story as well. Excellent. And uh, just for the viewers, uh, is this piece displayed against the wall or is this just an overhead shot? This is an overhead shot. Um, and that's, oh. yeah, and this is again, a piece that uh, kind of precariously stacks and moves. So this is just Great. one arrangement amongst uh, many arrangements that could be created with, with the uh, piece itself. Um, and we're moving into the, uh, the axe stack here. Um, these appear to be um, axe heads that are replicated again um, and stacked uh, in various forms. Is this a, is this kind of a, um, I guess, a ongoing theme within your work of you make these multiples and you're able to arrange them differently each time you display them? Or is this a, uh, I guess, a set in stone um, type of display you would do with this piece? Yeah, um, so I think the overall composition um, just that, that kind of arc that's created with the stack. That's something that carries through every time it's displayed, but uh, the individual units are loose and free. And um, something that I've really been drawn to in, in having free units are the precarious nature of the ways in which things balance and how one object's balance is dependent upon the objects around it, um, which again speaks, uh, I think it speaks of our, uh, the nature of, of human existence in so many ways. So, and also the human condition. So things are precarious and although oftentimes intentional, um, it does not mean that uh, the whole scheme can't be altered dramatically and, and changed. But the one thing that would carry through would be that uh, the arc that's created by the piece uh, of its based on its component parts. All right, thank you, Clark. Um, and we're starting to get into kind of your uh, installation um, and work. So talk, I guess, a little bit about these, um, your light bulb cluster and these fused uh, light bulb studies as well. So um, in thinking about both of these pieces, uh, light bulb cluster and, and also uh, the light bulb study, um, I've been dealing with the, the whole notion of the ways in which we kind of turn our back on the foundational technologies and uh, the materials that we depend upon as well. So. At one point, if you were thinking about uh, the ice picks, we we're looking at the materials, looking at the objects and thinking about them as a uh, past tense uh, item. Uh, here, we're thinking about 
how uh, the incandescent light bulb has been something that's been a, a pivotal technology that's been utilized for uh, for 100 years. And uh, it's something that we're moving away from in a dramatic fashion, especially in contemporary times. Um, and just the notion that the light bulb has been a stand in for so many things, just thinking about uh, the light bulb bringing us out of out of darkness and allowing uh, so many different evolutions to occur within uh, society. But it's also uh, something now that's antiquated and uh, no longer something of, uh, of need. Uh, uh, this is a piece that I, I created out of uh, a series of light bulbs that have been fused together. And I was thinking about just glass as being a traditional craft material and a traditional craft form would be a bowl. So this really is a, a bowl shaped form that uh, has been uh, there. Uh, so this is the rear side of it. It's been yep. utilizing uh, these individual light bulbs that have been melted and uh, it doesn't function as a bowl. It's purely uh, a bowl by reference alone. Um, just as these are light bulbs uh, by reference alone, they no longer serve a function. And uh, I'm in essence kind of neutering not only the form, but also the, the objects and creating a new form uh, utilizing these, again, antiquated structures. Great. Um, so some more, uh, this piece called 48 uh, Half Hours. Talk a little bit about this piece uh, and, and kind of, I guess, we can kind of see this progression into using multiple materials now. Um, more, I would say, I, I guess, a um, interactive sculpture um, quality to these. So please talk a bit about this piece. Uh, yeah, so I have been kind of uh, expanding upon material bases and um, things that in order to kind of push forward concepts and uh, push forward the themes that I'm, I'm working in. Um, I utilize plywood here. Again, this is going to be another material that we see uh, that quite literally surrounds us. Um, and I, I ended up creating these four large crate structures that uh, atop which there's uh, wired components that uh, based upon a, a specific sequence, these light bulbs will illuminate over time. And uh, the act of illuminating the light bulbs uh, causes the light bulbs to burn out uh, within seconds. So again, it's uh, speaking of the magic uh, that was associated with the incandescent light bulb traditionally, speaking of the, the awe and the wonder and this ability again to allow us to move forward uh, and come from the darkness to this new illuminated age. Uh, now, again, we're destroying uh, that those foundational concepts, we're destroying those light bulbs by the second. And um, those light bulbs, once they've been uh, burnt out, they're, they're stored uh, in the the container that's below. So uh, there's four of these structures uh, that when displayed, they will periodically illuminate light bulbs um, throughout, the, 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 throughout the display period. And um, it's just, again, speaking of that, the fleeting nature of time and experience and uh, the, the ways in which uh, individuals, although we carry these experiences with us, some of them are more defined than others. Um, and experiences become these moments that we try to separate out. We try to give them distinct periods and distinct times in which things have taken place, but with time uh, and with experience that becomes much more complicated. So to speak about an individual moment in time uh, almost becomes uh, somewhat impossible to do, but we can kind of generalize or speak of the, the nature or the, the essence of that moment. So. Um, and just to kind of um, transition to the end of our conversation, um, would you be able to discuss perhaps uh, without visual kind of where do you, uh, where you're heading in terms of um, the work you're currently um, crafting right now? Um, are you uh, using more of a mixed medium? Or are you balancing that with glass or what's kind of your strategy currently? No, I, uh, so that's a good question. Um, I, I think about these two bodies as being somewhat convergent. Um, and I still am a caster by choice. Um, I do continue to cast glass. Um, however, I think also with some of these installation pieces are able to more readily uh, discuss concerns um, and also have a, an open discussion with viewers. So 
I think it's more of this dichotomous path in which uh, I do like these installation pieces that are that are uh, talking about again these baseline technologies, but I like to balance that out with the I almost want to say a more traditional means of making uh, something that is uh, more dependent upon aesthetic value and uh, a lot of the the design uh, undercurrents that it, they're founded upon, but um, Nonetheless, I, I think both bodies still have a lot to say. Um, and uh, so I do kind of go between the two. And I think that keeps things a little bit more interesting for me as well. Um, well, previously I was creating just glass sculptures and um, that was something that I feel like uh, really was somewhat static and uh, it was cathartic, but nonetheless, it was not uh, as satisfying as, as I would like as well, so. Uh, that's where I branch out, and I'm not to say I'm just sticking within these two, uh, these two bodies, but um, always looking to expand and reinvent, and uh, uh, I guess build upon a knowledge base as well. So, hey, well, Clark, I have to thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk about your exhibition with me. Um, everyone, this uh, lecture will be available shortly on at Howard CC. Uh, backslash galleries. Um, and thank you, Clark, for uh, joining us. Oh, it's, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all in person one day down the, down the road. <laughs> yes, very much. Thank you so much, Clark. Take care. You as well. Take care.